Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for stopping by at our presentation, Creative Storytelling with Machine Learning, New Pathway into AI Education. We, I'm Yumiko Murai. Uh, we are a group of researchers, educators, and designers from different parts of US and Canada. We are all committed to supporting creative learning and play in our work and have many years of experience working with students and educators in K-12 formal and in informal learning settings. We gather together to explore the application of machine learning to support creative learning in this project. Uh, in this presentation, we are uh, we first will start with some introduction and background of the projects, and we then will introduce the platform called FlashPal that we use for this project's design and developed by Tiffany Chen, one of our teammates. Then we'll talk about the workshop and our findings. As our society adapts more and more advanced technologies, there have been an increased recognition that all children should be exposed to the topic of AI from an early age. Introducing AI to children is said to help them make more informed decision as they engage with the technology in their everyday lives and also think critically about its impact in our social systems. Many of us hope that eventually such process empowers them to be the next generation of researchers, designers, and developers of these technologies. Open exploration with AI is considered to be a powerful approach for children to cultivate familiarity and critical perspectives on AI. Constructionist learning approach, which considers creative construction of personally meaningful artifacts as a powerful approach to learning, could be a promising way to have learners engage in open exploration with AI. Storytelling is one of the most common forms of constructionist learning activities, and digital technologies can greatly assist such learning process. For example, Scratch, one of the most widely used visual coding platforms, enable anyone to create a variety of projects from animation to games. Another well-known platform is Makey Makey, which enables users to connect computer to any conductive physical materials to trigger computational interaction which is also widely used for storytelling projects. There are also creative construction technologies that incorporate machine learning, such as Cognate and Teachable Machine, that enables users to expand their creative possibilities with the help of machine learning while engaging with and learning about AI. Our work features a platform called PlashPal, another creative construction technology specifically designed to support children's storytelling with machine learning. Plashpal is a web-based platform that enables children teach a computer to recognize different gestures and trigger audio in response using accelerometer data collected with microbit. As you can see here, when Froggy, this flash toy, stretches or do jump, do, does a jumping jacks. On the left side of the screen, you can see what movements the computer is in, interpreting as Froggy is making movements. I'll play it one more time. Oops. Existing programming platforms support programming various movements. However, they are designed to be simple and minimally confusing and detects limited number of movements. This is not an ideal uh, to sense complex movements that children tend to do with their plash toys like hula dancing. Now PlashPal uses machine learning to categorize and create models of gesture that it's seen and make a prediction when you perform different gestures like wave or run or hula dance. So how you go about this is first um, thing what you do is uh, record samples of the different gestures. And so as you can see, the gestures appears as a visual representation on the screen. And secondly, 
you record sounds and link them to the gestures. Whoops. And on your right side, um, it shows that how you can connect the gestures that you recorded to the sounds that you are uh, you have just recorded. And the third step is you'll test out your design and see how well it works. And once it's done, you're ready to create a storytelling project. To support users troubleshoot, Plaspal also display each recorded data and shows the numeric distance to the current movement. By clicking each sample, you can also see exactly which visual, rep visual represents each sample. So you can see that those uh, pink, um, pink lines shows that, that exactly what you just clicked. The research questions that we explored in the study were, what are the ways Plashpal contributes to storytelling? And how storytelling with machine learning support learning in classroom settings? If you are interested in learning more about the design details of Plashpal, please take a look at this paper presented at the IDC conference. Um, the data collection was conducted in a four hour workshop as a part of a summer teacher professional development in maker education computer science, specifically focused on microbit. The workshop was entirely online um, on the platform of Zoom. In total, 39 pre-K through 12 educators from 70 states in the US agreed to participate in the study. Majority of the participants were classroom teachers and few school administrators and out of school educators. We started the workshop with a brief introduction to the topic of AI and Plashout platform. Then we had a storytelling workshop using Plashbot. Educators formed groups and were provided with a worksheet like this, where they were asked to imagine location and activities that their stuffed animal might be doing in a day. They then noted ideas for gestures and sound associated with each activity. Educators recorded the short video on Flipgrid demonstrating the stories that they have created with Plashpal. After break, educators regrouped themselves and designed a lesson plan incorporating Plashpal in whatever way they like. Educators were provided with guiding questions to think about the lesson, including introduction, creation and sharing and reflection of the activity. So findings. During the workshop, we observe educators creating a variety of stories using flash files. We identify five types of stories. We'll show a couple of examples. Um, so this one is uh, where an educator is narrating the story and uh, um, working, moving, working with the plash toy to demonstrate that story. So um, as you can see in this photograph, in, in this video, uh, edu an educator is narrating it and then 
the movement that they makes um, creates the sound of him walking, humming as he walks and falling asleep. The next one is an educator is having a conversation with a toy. So this teacher um, was in the story himself and in having a conversation with the, with the stuffed animal and the, stuffed, um, the voices of the stuffed animal was played back by Plash Pal. The final example that I wanted to show was where educators collaboratively told a story using breakout function of the Zoom. I hope you were able to hear um, an audio. It's a little bit um, difficult because the microphone was catching the um, sound coming from the computer through Plashpal. Um, but uh, these educators were using the Plashpal to um, capture playback, um, some of the um, voices of the character and then the shivering sound uh, that they are making. Um, so, we were able to see different ways Plashpa contributing these variety of stories. Um, for example, either to make a sound, to voice the character saying, or to add a narration, or to play background music. And uh, many of the work were having this combination of all these four things. For the research, second research question, we observed a variety of ideas to apply such machine learning supported storytelling tool to into classroom. Many participants see storytelling with Plashball as a great way to engage students, get familiar with vocabularies and domain ideas through creative storytelling. For example, one educator shared an idea of having students role play conversations with mat uh, between mathematicians to have them familiarize with some of the math ideas that they are um, working on. Another commonly proposed idea was raising awareness about physical movement and gestures. For instance, one educator talked about how gestures are culturally embedded and important form of a communication. And by having students name unconscious gestures and share them, she can foster more mindful communication in her class. Another idea we heard several times was a social and emotional learning. One group proposed an idea 
to have students collaboratively create projects that connect emotion and movement, as well as different contexts that they tend to appear. A number of educators also, men also mentioned that um, how the activity of creative projects can be a great way to introduce how machine learning works. Concerns over troubleshooting and lack of infrastructure to operate and uh, archive their work in classrooms were addressed. As a takeaways, our explanation showed that the tool like Plashball can open up the opportunity for students to engage in open-ended uh, open -ended interaction with machine learning through storytelling. Educators showed that there are many ways machine learning supported activities can be connected to disciplinary learning that are already happening in their classrooms. The type of applications indicated in the study also highlight the potential of the machine learning supported construction tool to bring personal and cultural artifacts like plush toys into classrooms. While many machine learning tools such as voice activated, activated assistants are often designed for individual use, our workshop indicated collaborative opportunities with machine learning, which could be an interesting future work to explore. A number of educators also highlighted the value of troubleshooting process to introduce how machine learning works to students. Constructionist learning, which is designed around personally meaningful projects, can be a powerful driver uh, for troubleshooting. Further exploration should be conducted on how constructionist learning can support the educational potential of troubleshooting process for learning about AI. Finally, while Plashpal did not have a function to save the projects on the platform in order to avoid violating privacy, we found that this was a limitation for many educators who wanted to allow students to work across multiple course classes, class sessions. As we explore AI platforms for educational environment, more conversations should be had both to explore what are the guidelines for ethical use of technology in classrooms, and also to explore ways to raise awareness among students themselves about ethical issues around AI supported tools. Um, that's it for now. Thanks for listening. Hope you can join us at the meetup and uh, um, have a conversation with us. Um, Plashpal is an open ended source, open source platform um, that anyone can try and use. So please check out that link and uh, let us know how you would apply it in your own uh, field and context. Thank you so much for listening.